Obviously, it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. Yes, a Y in or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet to get an isolation with the with the linebacker. You tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him, if he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker here, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here. What's up, guys? Welcome into Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. Find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. Email us, Packers Total Access at gmail.com. Text us. 865-658-5824. Joined alongside Jacob. <laughs> Got to zip. Did you just zip that up, Jacob? No, I zipped it down a little bit. I Got a little too conservative. <laughs> <laughs> we got Jacob <laughs> on the border of Minnesota and Wisconsin, and we got uh, Tim live in Green Bay. Tim said he just ate a whole chicken. Is there some truth to that, Tim? Half, at least half a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we roasted a chicken tonight, man. I was just uh, chowed down before I jumped on the pie, so. If I start nodding off, don't take it personal. It's uh, definitely the, you know, two and a half pounds of chicken that I just ate. <laughs> it is what it is, man. Um, yeah, so obviously, Jacob, and all we're on Rumble, we're live on Rumble, said Emilio isn't here again, slacker. And then, of course, the United Bates comes in and says, uh, must be an electric race car. So, there you go. <laughs> um, you know, uh, yeah, and if you guys were on the midday PTA stream where we did a little mock draft the earlier, uh, number one Packer fan said, let's go Charlotte 49ers, LOL. So I learned today there is a college team called the Charlotte 49ers. Pretty impressive, right? I'm not sure which high school it is, but kind of exciting. So there you go. Um, let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors tonight. Ticket King, the official ticket provider of Packers Total Access Live. Wisconsin based since 1992, specializing in Packers tickets. They're Wisconsin's largest ticket source. They've got offices next to Lambeau Field as well as in Milwaukee. You can click on the link in this video description, and that will take you to the ticketking.com where you can register for free as a customer and get ready for that May schedule release right around the corner, guys. Next next month, we're going to know exactly uh, when and where the Packers are playing. I'm really excited about that information. Make sure you go over to theticketking.com and uh, and get yourself squared away there because I'm telling you they're going to be able to save you money on Packers tickets this year. We appreciate them uh, sponsoring the show here this evening. So uh, right off the bat, Jacob, Tim, do you guys got anything you want to hit on before we kind of get into the stuff that I've got lined up here, one of which is an article that Jacob actually sent over? You guys got anything? Sometimes we get to talking, and I know, I know on the front side you're thinking, man, I wish I'd have talked about this, anything at all. So, are you guys talking about the, the Grand Dubois Charlotte 49ers? Is that a is that a thing? I'm assuming so. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Grant Dubois. Why? Did you say How? Dubois? Du du Dubois. Dubois, right? Yeah, he, missed, he, he, he wrote that, right? He wrote Dubois. Yeah, right. But he misspelled it, didn't he? Am I thinking right? All right. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Tim, we need to spell check on Grant's last name, please, sir. Um, okay, let's see. I'm just joking, Tim. Don't do that, man. We're good. We're good. We're totally good. <laughs> so we uh we had a Quay That's Walker. D U B O S E Grant Dubose. Yeah, so there you go. Grant Dubose. I can't spell L O L. Well, you're in good company here tonight, sir. I promise you that. So. You can't First spell and we can't read. <laughs> First things first, we got a Quay Walker sighting today, guys, or at least in the last couple of days, evidently. Look who's checking out. the. This came from uh, at Rhodes underscore JJ. Uh, look who is checking out the Braves for the first time, MLB game, for, for their first MLB game. That's a hashtag damn good dog. And at Packers, at Quay Walker underscore, go Braves, go Pack, go, go Braves. Love it. So what I love about this picture, Tim, Quay's just a man of the people. Looks like he's got some uh, some wings there. It kind of looks like maybe an Asian glaze top. <laughs> I thought Clayton's eyes go right to the food. It's a Peking zing. You're correct, Clayton. Oh my gosh, man! 
uh, that right there, man, with a with an ice cold daddy soda, we're ready to roll. You know what I mean? Sitting there watching a baseball game, nodding off till about the seventh inning, you wake up and go, "Who's winning? What happened out there, guys?" That's usually how I watch baseball nowadays. So, <laughs> um, but pretty cool to see Quay out there, right? I'm um, just hanging out at a Braves game, Jake. Yeah, it's really cool. And you can tell the kid next to him; it must be either somebody he knows because it looks yeah. like he's rocking a Packers jersey at see the me. Braves game. They're both rocking the the same Braves. Uh, bracelet there so yeah i'm assuming he just kind of showed up got some gear on yeah he looks like he's happy man i mean i'm excited he's a big dude man. i was gonna I say is he just me or does he look a little thick there too he's man looking, he's he's looking like he's getting them wings down 12 at a time oh man let's go there wings go. and weight rooms there you go wings weight rooms and well <laughs> that's all we got that's it all right yeah Dynamite drop in, Monty. That broadcast school really paid off. And <laughs> Doug Foreman said, Is that your son, Jacob? <laughs> Wish. No. no, you're kidding me, man. If, if it was Jacob's son, he'd have a full beard, I promise you. That's true. <laughs> you already have that thing grown out. So we do have somewhat some bad news. I usually don't like talking about stuff like this, but guys, it's full draft season. We got to talk about it. We got to talk about uh, how far Tavondre Sweat's going to fall to us in the draft now. I think that's what we're getting to here, Tim. It's uh, that dude is about to sink, man. Um, it sucks too, and you know, anytime, anytime driving under the influence is involved, man. Um, you know, I remember. I think his name was. Uh, Leonard, uh, Leonard Little, I believe, that played for the University of Tennessee. Um, he had a situation that was like, this is as bad as it gets, you know, when you're driving behind the wheel intoxicated and you actually take someone's life, obviously. Just devastating. Luckily for Tavondre Sweat, that didn't happen. But anytime you talk about a DWI, it's, uh, it's a tough thing, man. So uh, ML Football tweeted this out. Uh, breaking news, Texas star defensive tackle and projected first-round pick Devondre Sweat was arrested for driving while intoxicated. Driving while intoxicated is a Class B misdemeanor per NBC. So we've actually got a news clip here from the local uh, local news there. I can't remember where it happened. Did it happen down in Texas? Am I thinking right? I want to say Houston or something. I could be wrong. I, I shouldn't even. Let's see if we can pick up where it actually happened at. Here is just a quick news clip where they, uh, they covered the story um, there locally. To a developing story involving former Texas football player Tavondre Sweat. Within the past few hours, we learned that he was arrested and charged with driving while intoxicated. His bond was set at $3,000. The arrest happened on I-35 in North Austin. So joining me now is sports anchor Corey Mose. And Corey, you were there when he was leaving the Travis County Jail today. Yeah, that's correct. It, unfortunate situation and something that Texas fans didn't expect to hear on this Sunday afternoon. As you can see in the video here, Tavondre Sweat is leaving the jailhouse with a towel over his head. Now we asked his attorney for a comment on the situation. His, his attorney did not say anything. And of course, when we asked Tavondre Sweat for a comment, as well. He stayed quiet before getting into his vehicle there and then driving off. And so just an unfortunate situation right now for a player that's about to have a big week. Mm -hmm. This is the NFL draft week later in April, mm -hmm. and he was a projected the second round pick, and he's already had a former interview with the Cowboys at the NFL draft combine. He actually talked to the Texans defensive line coach at Texas's pro day. And so a lot of eyes were on Tavondre Sweat leading into this NFL draft. So now we'll see if this situation will tank his draft stock. Yeah, I know you guys will be keeping us updated on how this will impact his future NFL career. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Corey. All right, so that was the local news just kind of hitting on it. Um, so Austin, Texas. Yeah, Austin, Austin, which is where that's where UT's at, right? Where Texas is at, where he plays. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's let's cool. go around the horn with it, Tim. Like, you hear <sighs> something like that, it's tough. You know, because there's some people that would go, come on, guys, it's not that big of a deal. But most of the time, those same people are the ones that are looking at Aaron Hernandez and how that whole thing turned out. There was warning signs everywhere with Aaron Hernandez. And, you know, a team like the Patriots gets absolutely crucified for the fact that you gave him an opportunity and kind of aided in that whole debacle that happened there with him. I'm not trying to suggest that Tavondre Sweat – is a bad character person. I'm just saying I understand why teams don't want to touch that stuff, especially after some of the stuff that's happened in the past when some of the warning signs were there. But, uh, yeah, what do you think, Tim? Is this 
how far do you think he'll drop? How would this affect you if you were the GM? You may say, hey, it ain't going to affect it all, and there ain't nothing wrong. There's no wrong answer here. But uh, I think it depends on the the teams that are looking at him. You know, not every – everyone has the same standards. Some, some teams may have higher standards than others when it comes to, uh, cause let's be honest, this is a player character kind of issue really. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's not criminal. So he's not, this is not a criminal charge, uh, class B misdemeanor, uh, or excuse me, not a felony charge. So as far as the legal ramifications, I'm sure this will just be, uh, you know, handled pretty quickly and he'll do some community service, you know, pay a, pay a fine, that kind of thing. Um, but as far as like violating character policy or, you know, things that these teams uh, hold their players to as far as accountability, that's going to hurt his draft stock. Um, you know, I don't know if he'll plummet. You know what I mean? I don't think he'll be, a, you know, fall all the way to the sixth round or something. But you never know. We've seen crazier things happen. The unfortunate thing about this is, is it's just so in this day and age, it's 2024, man. I mean, I don't care how hammered you are. Like, get on your phone, swipe at your Uber. And you're magically where you need to be. You don't you don't have to get into a car and drive. It's completely avoidable. So it, it does kind of put into question his decision making. That's know? the big. Thing. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge any college kid for being a college kid and going out and partying. But I do got to think about your judgment skills when you're when you're doing that. You know, because there's a lot of guys that will go out party, have a good time. Maybe you had too much to drink. Call a cab. Get in an Uber whatever there there's a million different ways to uh get yourself from point a to point b without driving nowadays um so it's just unfortunate but um luckily like you said nobody you know this didn't affect anyone else you know he didn't hurt anyone else um he basically just hurt his draft stock right here and uh probably some points on his uh driving record um among other things you know so um that's just kind of how i see it i don't want to i don't want to drag him uh, because, you know, we don't know and people can make mistakes in their life and become better people for it at the end. And, you know, people yeah. can change things like that. So, you know, you don't want to drag this young man too hard before his uh, career really gets off the ground. But 100 percent, he's going to drop in the draft. I believe it. Yeah, I agree, man. And like Dave says here in the uh, in the chat, he said this is sweats gas gas mask moment. We're talking about less than three weeks from the draft, Jacob. And uh I mean, again, Tim, you hit the nail on the head, man. If anything is an organization, it's you're looking up going, all right, man, we can't – can we trust this guy? I mean, if he can't make better decisions than that, what kind of decisions is he going to make uh, when he's uh, representing our organization, right? But what do you think, Jake? Yeah, um, I'm going to mimic what Tim said. I mean, people go through different stages in their lives. Lord knows that I was an absolute horrible human being when I was his age. Um, you add so, in – hundred thousand dollars of money and uh, a lot of fame and status and who knows what i would have done that being said like you just said this is an investment these guys aren't just rookies or whatever that these teams are going to make a two to three plus possibly a whole career investment into these people and like you just said um and like doug talked about it it sounds like that uh or i'm sorry somebody pointed out that he was questioned ron maybe about his uh, partying habits. And he admitted straight up, he's like, yep, I'm a big partier, but that's in the past. And then you go ahead and do this three weeks before your your draft. And I think it just kind of throws a massive, giant, flaming red flag into the sand that says, hey guys, I'm so, I'm so unskilled or uncontrolled in my emotions that I can't even bottle it up for two and a half weeks when I know it's gonna cost me millions of dollars if I don't do so. That to me is so shocking that I would definitely take a step back now He's a freak of nature. He's a talented guy. Well, this, like Tim said, knock him back to the sixth. No, but it'll take him out of maybe the back of the first round, almost maybe to the third, I'd bet. Um, and like I said, that just probably cost him millions of dollars and who knows what else in his career. So, and no matter what he does now, he's always going to be that guy that got the DUI before the draft. You can't undo that. You can only have one chance at a first impression. So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Coach Lynn in the chat said, when you're looking for players, you want smart, tough, dependable players. This shows none of those qualities. Um, Yep. Yeah, no two ways about it. And the uh, the tweet that you were referring to there too, Jacob, actually came in from Pack Daddy. He did a big oof gif, right? Because Dane Brugler said, according to a team source, Sweat has been upfront with NFL teams about his, quote, partying as an underclassman and made it a point of emphasis in interviews that that was all in the past. Obviously, today's incident three weeks from the draft won't help. So um, it was already on the radar, you know, as a former president once said, fool me once, shame on 
shame on <laughs> you. Fool me. You fool me. You fool me more than once. You can't fool me again. You leave W uh, alone there, Clay. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man. I'll tell you what. That was, can. I'm still. Can we? I'm going to I'm, I'm say it. I'm going to say it. How in the hell are the last four or five presidents we had the best option that we have in this country? I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and I know that's going to tick off both parties. Good. Good. That's Good. So, that just unbelievable. Anyway, but I did hear someone say one time, this did crack me up, and we'll get off politics. Or once, sometime, one time uh, someone said, my God, he's an idiot. Uh, you know, talking about W, said he, uh, you know, he can't even put a sentence together. And they said, well, Obama reads off a teleprompter. And I'll never forget, it's on a construction site. That person said, hell, at least he can read the teleprompter. <laughs> <laughs> Cracked me up. I was just like, it's hard to argue with this. Oh, um, man. So, anyway, I'm just mind boggled that that's the best we've got. Anyway, um, so, yeah, interesting to see where Tavondre Sweat's going to fall to. Um, if we were to go to the consensus big board, and already yeah. had, a, had a mock draft pulled up already. Go ahead. You has go. anybody can confirm that it was alcohol? Because them Smitty here makes a decent point. That if it's you, because honestly, I swear, as as odd as it may sound, or whatever the taboos in society are, if he quote unquote had a DWI because he was under the influence of, let's say, weed, teams are not going to care half as much. They're just not. Right. It's a good point, but still, you know. It's illegal to drive while you're under the influence, period. You know, so for me, it's uh, I don't know, man. I don't know enough about that that world to really comment too much other than you go in and you tell the team, say, that stuff's behind me. I'm not doing that anymore. And then you go out and you do it. Yeah. It's uh, just a bad look. But Devondre Sweat, according to the Consensus Big Board and their mock draft database website, he is currently sitting at the 56 spot and he peaked at 32. So I'm interested to see <clears throat> interested to see if that changes here in the next few days. But currently you're saying that basically he's a late first round, you know, first to second rounder, I guess is the the tab you would put on him. So uh, you'll probably see him drop down to the third or the fourth round, I would imagine. Um, because the talent's there, guys. And let's be honest, like again, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to compare to Vondre Sweat, someone who obviously took another human being's life, but um all the signs were there for Aaron Hernandez and he didn't drop further than the third round. So I can't imagine it's going to affect him more than that. Um, seeing that this isn't, you're not talking about someone trying to physically hurt someone, you know what I mean? So, um, and some of you would probably think, well, you know, he didn't become that until he got to new England. Now he actually broke a, uh, a restaurant owner's face by punching him. Um, so yeah, they said Tebow had to drag him out of that place. He being obviously Aaron Hernandez. So, that's just the one, like the worst case scenario, how things can really turn out when you're talking about right. Hernandez. But again, it's why teams have to be cautious, man. It really is. So, um, yeah, we're not but, seeing that level with sweat here. We're not no, seeing like not violent, all. violent outburst kind of stuff, but certainly a character issue because, you know, it's like Jacob said, you know, you look at all the, you're about to enter the draft, you you know, the notoriety you have coming from a big school. Um, your, your, you know, high, high recruit, all of these things. Well, it's only going to get crazier when you sign your contract in the NFL. Now you're going to throw millions of dollars on top of this, more fame, more notoriety, more exposure. You know, you got to look at it. Is this young man going to be able to handle that? Well, if going into the draft, we're, we're seeing this, I, those are the type of things I think GMs are thinking about, uh, when they take a, take a shot at drafting somebody. Yeah, for sure. All right, so that's the Tavondre Sweat news. And, again, you're going to have stuff like this is going to continue to uh, kind of shape up the draft. Hopefully that's the last negative thing we see in that regard. But um, you never know, man, as it gets closer to the draft. It, it kind of reminds me of what Belichick used to say to players. And a buddy of mine that played for Coach Belichick actually experienced this himself. When they would break um, for uh, the time right before camp or whatever, he would tell them, like, hey, guys, listen, this is when people do stupid stuff. Like, please be aware. Because these guys are – they know that when they get back to training camp, they're going to be locked down, right? They're not going to be – I mean, they're going to have their days planned to the minute by someone else. So it's like they try to get all that fun in right before they go to camp. 
uh, unless you're uh, Paul Horning and Max McGee, and they would just, you know, do it during the season. But that's a story for another day. Um, so he would always talk about that. And I think about that, too. It's like you you just want to talk to every prospect and go, you're this close, man. You've worked your ass off your entire life to get right here. Come on, man. Three more weeks. You can do this. Let's go. You can do this. You know what I'm saying? It's just frustrating to see people hurt themselves like that. So, anyway, there you go. There is uh, the Tavondre Sweat news. Now, we had some other uh, info come across the wire from our uh, our buddy Easton Butler, who's been kind of keeping up with all these top 30 visits. And it says the Packers are hosting Northwestern linebacker Brian Gallagher on a top 30 visit. He did go on to say a likely undrafted free agent target. So, it's important to uh, kind of understand where he's going to be at. So when it comes to Bryce Gallagher, let's see exactly where he falls on the consensus big board just to kind of get an idea. Is there a chance he gets drafted or no? Um, they got him in the 408 spot, and he actually peaked at uh, 374. So obviously he's going to be undrafted. I think we feel pretty confident in saying that. Let's see if he's got any kind of profile here on PFF, and I'll just read the grades to you uh, guys and gals here. We're looking for Bryce Gallagher. Bryce Gallagher. He's not on page one. That ain't good. Now he didn't make the cut. It went all the way down to 308 at the linebacker position. So this could be a smoke screen. It could be one of those undrafted free agents. We talked about how Ted Thompson, this is how he used to do business, Jacob. He was always he was always spending a good chunk of those top 30 visits on guys that they don't plan on drafting, but he wants to get as much information as possible because when you sign that UDFA – um, obviously, those can be as valuable as a draft pick. It's really it's, it's an extension of the draft. So, uh, you got anything on uh, on Bryce Gallagher? I got nothing on him, man. I, I did not know who that was. I'll be honest. Um, yeah. But can I ask you a kind of a fun question? <laughs> Which yeah, uh, Cody McDougal McDougal he said, "Who's the Conor McGregor of the NFL?" We were talking in the chat about some random stuff, and that popped up. Mm-hmm. Who would you think would be the Conor McGregor of the NFL? I know who it was when I was growing up. It would be like Bill Romanowski or some just Romanowski, man. I yeah, was a freak. <laughs> so I, mean, I guess what I'm I, I don't fully understand the question. Are you who's saying like the hothead, cocky who's personality, like, right? Yeah, biggest sure. personality. Yeah, man, that is tough. I uh, see Jair on that list. Jair kind of carries himself that way. Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty fair uh Comparison. Yeah. You know, here recently, one that come to mind for me is A.J. Hawk's brother-in-law. Um, that, no, not A.J. Hawk. J.J. Watt's brother-in-law um, used to play in Houston, linebacker Cushman, Brian Cushman. Cushing. Cushing. That's it. Brian Cushing. That dude is the closest thing I've seen to Conor McGregor because he's as hot-headed as they get. And, that's a good uh, answer yeah. here. Too old for this. Cortland Finnegan or that guy. Oh yeah. yeah. It's a scrapper. <laughs> yeah. I remember when uh who was the big wide receiver in Houston, ironically. Um God, what was his name? I think he actually might have Andre, uh, Andre you almost had Johnson. it. Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson. Remember when he smoked Cortland's head? Oh yeah. He 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 was like getting out to you gonna learn today, little man. Took <laughs> tore that helmet off of smacking him around. Golly boy. Yeah, so yeah, I don't know, man. Tim, what do you think? You got one? I don't know, man. It's hard to hard to say right now. Romanowski be a good one from you know all time status, uh, but yeah. uh, Dominic Sue. Sue. Think, yeah, Sue would be yeah. one, I guess. But Jalen you know, Ramsey. There you Ooh, go. It's... Ramsey's a talker. Yeah, for he's sure. Talking. He's got he's got a he's got some swag. Fontes perfect. Fontes perfect. <laughs> Oof. I mean, what about Pat McAfee? Remember Pat McAfee uh, punted the ball in? I think it got downed at the one yard line. He did the whole Connor McGregor. That's right. He did that. Yeah. Oh, Cody <laughs> hit it on the head there in the chat. Cam Newton. Oh, yeah. yeah. That'd, oh, be, that's a good, that'd yeah. be a good one for sure. He's yeah. <laughs> notorious. Yeah. I'd like to take this moment to apologize. Absolutely nobody. <laughs> was, I actually seen that video today. Believe it or not, it came across the feed. Every time it comes across the feed, too, I'm I'm hitting it every there time. That's, it That's the OG. Yeah. OG <laughs> no doubt, Ray Nitschke. Um, as far as Packers recently, other than Jair, who would it be? Who would it be? Oh, I don't know about Packers. Um, oh, hold up, I got you. Um, who was the defensive line? Mike Daniels, maybe. Mike Daniels. Yeah, he was, he was a pretty intense dude. 
Yeah, for sure. I don't know about the. I don't know if he had quite the arrogance of a Conor McGregor, <laughs> but yeah, I think I think Mike Daniels was just a tough, tough dude, and that's just who he was. Um, I don't know. I guess yeah. though, I could see it. Yeah. All right. Um, Jake, if you sent me an article earlier and rather than pull the article up fully, I'm just, I got a couple screen grabs of it. We'll check it out real quick. Uh, here's just, Jake has done a good job of pulling this top. Oh, stuff. I thought that was the screen grab. My bad. I hit the wrong oh, one. Oh, oh yeah. That, oh yeah. That, <laughs> is. That's is that the screen better. grab you were looking for? <laughs> yeah. Milio, this is what happens when you don't come to the show. But... <laughs> yeah. He looks so happy to be in his car bed. He really does. That's the worst Photoshop in history, but I love it. Those, that makes it even better. <laughs> so. There you oh, go. Man. All right. Uh, let's everything up now. All right. Let's get it. No, you're, you're, you're good. Here's background. All right. So this is the article that Jacob sent over. Um, and it was it on MSN. Am I thinking right? Where did it come from? Yeah. Uh, the story's by Freddie Boston. There's no way that's that guy's real name, by the way. It's got to be a pen name or so. Um, anyway, it says latest NFL.com mock draft has Packers screwing up a dream scenario. I love how the uh, national media has just the Packers screwing everything up, right? It's kind of funny how that works. So imagine a world where uh, Troy Fontana um, and Cooper DeGene are available when, when the Packers hit the clock in the first round. It's a dream scenario. Green Bay needs offensive line and cornerback help and would have the choice of two future stars. Fontana can become an all-pro at all five offensive line positions, including left tackle. He earned elite RAS scores of 9.62 at tackle, 9.94 at guard, and uh, it goes on to say there's a high probability he will be a top 20 pick. DeGene offers similar versatility with the ability to play across the secondary at corner, in the slot, or safety. He would be an impact starter with Pro Bowl potential no matter where he lines up. If Fontana and DeGene are available at number 25, the Packers have to take one of them, right? Maybe not. Chad Reuter, never heard of him, of NFL.com, released his latest mock draft, which sees Green Bay uh, pass on both prospects to select NC State linebacker Peyton Wilson at number 25. <laughs> While Wilson would be a fantastic day two option and help address the, play, the Packers' biggest positional need, it's hard to get behind this choice on the opening night, especially considering the other options. The article goes on to say um, – Packers must avoid linebacker in uh, in first round of the 2024 NFL draft. Line, let me get a little closer here. Linebacker may sit atop the Packers list of needs, but they shouldn't burn the number 25 at the position. It's rarely the correct choice to draft an off-ball linebacker in the first round, and there are no game-changing prospects in this year's class. Uh, history backs it up between 2013 and 2020. 21 off-ball linebackers were selected in the first round. Only four landed second contracts with the team they dra that drafted them. Uh, we only go to 2020 because linebackers picked in the following drafts are still playing on their rookie deals. It's not a premium position despite the Packers' urgent need. They shouldn't prioritize linebacker on day one. Green Bay will have a chance to land – a top offensive lineman or cornerback. In the case of the NFL.com mock, Fontana and DeGene were available. It's not a criticism of Wilson to say drafting him at number 25 would be a bad decision. Hey, hey, we're not talking bad about the guy. We're just talking bad about him. Uh, he can become an excellent starter in the NFL. Well, doesn't that sound nice, guys? And will be on the Packers' radar after earning a RAS of 9.88. However, his injury history is a concern. It may keep him out of the first round. So I like how they bring it back around and basically said it's, it's a bad pick, but it wouldn't be a bad pick. Right. Sure but he stays hurt a lot. So it'd be a bad pick. That's basically what the article said, but I'm glad you sent that Jacob, because we need as much information as possible as far as different websites and who they're taking where. So obviously there's one scenario where they got Peyton Wilson getting selected at 25. How would you feel about that dude? As far as Peyton Wilson linebacker out of NC state getting selected at 25. I am. You know, at first, I think that I'd like it. <clears throat> if you would have asked me about a month and a half, month ago, I probably would have said, yeah, I'm cool with that. But as we've done our exercises, if we've done all our, Mac, our mocks and that kind of stuff, I just think that it's very glaringly obvious that you need, in, in whatever order it comes, you need to address cornerback, you need to address offensive line within the two, the first two picks. That's just how I, uh, I'm, I'm going to basically use that as my kind of putting that in stone as far as my draft strategy. Um, mm -hmm. Every mock I do, if I don't go cornerback or offensive line within my first two picks, it just does not shape out to a draft that I like. 
And Peyton Wilson, you know, yeah, I like him, but as the first uh, linebacker off the board, when we know exactly what type of linebacker we need, we need a junior Colson. We need, um, we need a Cedric Gray. We need maybe, if you want to wait till the later rounds, you know, maybe a guy like Olafascio or more of a traditional Mike backer. We do have need for some guys like, you know, Trotter and, and maybe Wallace, if we do want to, you know, like we talked about upgrading the will and maybe that different Sam backer, but for what we want in a Mike linebacker, there's only about two or three candidates, really only two of them at the beginning of this draft. So I don't want to waste a draft pick that early on Peyton Wilson, who is, yeah, he's a very lanky kind of um, tall, leaner prospect that if he is not completely healthy, I don't want to waste another uh, first round pick on a linebacker. That's just me. Yeah. Yeah. I understand, man. Here the consensus big board has Peyton Wilson at 40 currently. Um, he peaked at 30, and they have the mock consensus mock saying he's going to go to Philly at 53, which that's a good example of 25 being kind of a reaching point, right, at least according to the consensus big board. What do you think, Tim? Would you be okay with Peyton Wilson at 25, or do you think that would be a, a mistake there? Um, I'm with Jacob on this one, like lockstep. To me, it's – are we taking O line or corner at twenty five? That's I'm yeah. just trying to figure that out in my head. What what's going to happen? I'm leaning more towards O line, mm-hmm. interior O line with the twenty fifth, and then trying to salvage and get a top tier corner um, at uh, at forty one. But um, I think that's the crux of it because I mean we've done enough mocks to know like if. You know, if you look at our needs, if we don't if we don't draw from those position groups early, uh, the whole rest of the draft just becomes a crapshoot, really. And, uh, you know, there's no telling who you're going to end up with. Um, I do. I do like Peyton Wilson. I know Jacob likes him. He just he just drafted him, but he drafted him at 41, not not 25. <clears throat> I, I think that's probably as early as we go go for him, you know. Yep. So yeah. that makes sense unless we trade down maybe into the mid thirties, I'd still be okay with it. You know what I mean? If, if it was one of those scenarios, um, you know, when you were talking about offensive line and cornerback, um, you know, kind of being the, the positions that you feel the best about when you do a mock draft and taking the 25th pick, the only other scenario that I see is the fact that there could be three, maybe even four quarterbacks. Some are saying five. I think that's a stretch. I think the over under is set between three and four on the betting line, but I could be wrong. Um, if you get four quarterbacks taken and you get six to eight offensive tackles taken, like they're saying before you get to the 15th pick, then for me, it's going to be defensive line. And, and three or four wide receivers. Yeah, exactly. That That's the other thing too, right? I mean, there's going to be just a, a ton of, a ton of quarterbacks, receivers, and tackles taken. So if that happens, then you're probably going to get your pick of the litter and defensive line. And uh, I actually did a mock earlier today by myself using my board. Um, Ooh. For, uh, top 100. And I like that, Clayton. I've got Jerzan Newton at 25. That that's, nice. that's the example that we're talking about. Like, you're talking about the top defensive lineman in the draft falling to you at 25. I, I'd be totally fine with that. Tim, didn't you do this on your mock, too? Am I thinking right, Jerzan Newton? Yeah, yes. uh, with with Jake Shavink. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did. I took Jerzan Newton just, just because of how that – how we were doing it with the snake draft and then – what was available and then looking at needs. Yeah, absolutely. Like you have to go Jerzan there, um, get D line out of the way. And then, yeah, you're right. You're very similarly, you know, you still got your boy Tyler Newbin there Mm -hmm. and then you make another home run draft pick with Christian Haynes. So, you know, you're looking good here. Linebackers addressed. I just feel like uh, I'd like to see two corners um, in this draft and it's, you know, you did the best you could there. Uh, I think Josh Newton's a great pick there at 126. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's the only corner we're going to get. And when you start getting down to those picks, we know what uh, what it looks like, you know. So um, it's all where you prioritize your need because you got to remember, like, you know, the Packers are going to look at need-based uh, draft approach, of course, but it's also best available. It's also, you know, the, there's so many different val- variables. So there's no really one way to – to look at it but um i think everything's going to hinge on which direction they choose to go at 25 you know and yeah not ruling out trading back you know as well so i love that draft personally playing yeah i I think think that's a great looking draft i I basically worked my board 
but I didn't want it to go too long. So I worked my board for the top 100 and then just went to PFF. And I tried to glance back at the board, but I, I worked the board really, really hard for the for the top 100 picks. And basically what it came down to, just to kind of give you a point of uh, value with each of these picks, um, Jerzan Newton or Johnny Newton, I have him on the 17th spot on my board. So I got the 17th best prospect at 25. Uh, Tyler Newbin is the 32nd best prospect on my board. I got him at 41. Christian Haynes, probably my favorite pick of all these. Uh, Christian Haynes is the 27th best prospect. Got him at 58. Um, Bo Limmer um, is the 40th best prospect center out of Arkansas. We got him at 88. And then Cedric Gray, of course, they gave an F to that because they're not very high on that PFF, at least their draft board. But Cedric Gray on my board is um, – See where's he at? He's actually sitting in the 64 spot. We were able to get him at 91, and then of course Josh Newton is one of my favorite corners in this draft. He's 71 on my board. We got him at 91 or at 126. And the Javen Foster one was really interesting because we pulled uh, the PFF grades up, and it was like, holy cow, this dude graded out really well. Missouri. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. We still got Trayvon Wallace. I don't think Trayvon Wallace is going to drop that far. I really don't. You know, no. with like the 33rd team has him as the third best mock, and I think they got him around 64. I could see him falling, you know, outside of the top 100, be impossible. Mm -hmm. But down to 245, I felt like I was cheating, taking him there. Like, there's no way that dude's going to be there. So, um, anyway, that's how that felt. It just kind of got me thinking. When you're looking at the linebackers, I addressed linebacker with Cedric Gray there so uh obviously he's 95 on the consensus big board but again i had him um sitting in the 64 spot so just couldn't pass up on him um yeah so uh it's gonna be interesting to see how linebacker kind of drives this draft a bit too right um the uh the draft that we did last night since we're kind of talking about mocks anyway let me uh i'll keep that pulled up for a second the draft that we did i think it was it was it last night? It was a night before that we did when Jake Shavink jumped on and we tried to just, it was like herding cats on here. We were all, you know, I don't know. I'd rather have him. I'd rather have him. You know, it's just hard to put it together, but here's how that first round shook out. Okay. So you'll notice here, if you look, I'm imagine, I imagine that Tavondre Sweat did not go in the first round here. He did not. Okay. So he, he was at least a second round pick. That's one thing I wanted to check out there. But the, the order in which these picks went was Caleb Williams one, Drake May two, Joe Alt three, Marvin Harrison senior or junior uh, fourth, Malik Neighbors fifth, Brock Bowers sixth, Quinion Mitchell seventh, Roma Dunze eighth, uh, Dallas Turner nine, uh, Talisa Fuaga um, in the 10 spot. Jerzan Newton in this draft went 11th. So there's no way he was going to fall to 25 to us in this specific draft. Uh, you got Leatu uh, Latu from UCLA, edge defender with the neck injury. He went 12th to the Broncos. Jaden Daniels went to the Raiders. Cooper DeGene went 14 to the uh, to the Iowa Hawkeyes, uh, or from the Iowa Hawkeyes. He was drafted by the Saints. Um, the 15th spot out of Washington was Troy Fontana, went to the Colts. Then you had Jared Verse, edge defender uh, from FSU, went to Seattle. J.C. Latham tackle went 17 to Jacksonville, Byron Murphy, defensive lineman, went to the Cincinnati Bengals. Fashanu, tackle, went to the L.A. Rams. Terry and Arnold, cornerback, went to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Amarius Mims, tackle, went to uh, went 21 to the Dolphins. 22 to the Eagles was Nate Wiggins. 23 to the Vikings, Kool-Aid McKinstry, boo. 24 to Dallas Cowboys was Graham Barton. And then in this specific one here, the Packers took Jackson Powers Johnson Center out of Oregon. So, um, yeah, I like it. And here's what's crazy. Look how early Tyler Newbin went too, man. 26, right? So he may not even be there when we when we try to take him at 41, right? There's a chance of that. Um, Brian Thomas Jr. went 27th wide receiver. He's really low on my board, by the way. He's like, I want to say he's like down around 170 or something, which is wild. Which one? What's that? Who? Brian Thomas. Oh, yeah. Do you not, do, I do not understand. He's a body, dude. He's not a hand catcher. He's a body catcher. I don't know. It, it's just wild because people absolutely love him. And uh, let me just double check. It might have been lower than that, actually. I remember going, dang, he's way down there. He might have been even lower. Brian Thomas Jr. Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, that's a, look at uh, Guyton went in the first. TJ Tampa went 29th overall. That's, that's an interesting draft. 
Yeah, it was. And we kind of shook it up a little bit with the settings. I do remember that. I can't even find Brian Thomas Jr. now. He, I know he was significantly lower on my board. I definitely didn't have him up there um, in the uh, in the top 30 like most people do. So I just can't figure it out. There he is. So he was 89th on my board, which is really low. But, again, his PFF grade in 2022, he was 603rd wide receiver. Like, you know, and, and then last year he was 164th. It wasn't like, holy cow, this dude tore it up, right? Um, and the other thing you got to think about, too, is who are you playing with? Did Brian Thomas Jr. make Jaden Daniels or did Jaden Daniels make Brian Thomas Jr.? Right? Malik Neighbor, let's take all the coverage away. Yeah, there you go. That's another great point, right? When you got multiple players looking to be picked high in the draft that are on the same team, you got you to gotta look at that a little bit. But, yeah, Peyton Wilson going 32 to the Chiefs, too. That's interesting. But, Tim, anything stick out to you on this draft here, man? Anything you kind of go, whoa? Yeah, Packers got JPJ. I'm happy. <laughs> we'll take it. Shore up that O line. Um, what else you need to know, right? Yeah, I'm like I said, I O line, D line, corner. That's what I'd like around twenty five. Mm-hmm. So anything that looks like this is uh, is awesome. But I I do think the Newbin um, the Newbin pick is certainly interesting too. Like like you said, you know we've had so many mocks where we end up getting our our hands on them, but you know there is a very realistic possibility that he won't even be on the board when we pick and I don't know what the likelihood is that Goody trades up in this draft. Um, He'd have to really have his eyes on somebody and be convinced uh, to trade up. I think, I think if we do make a trade, it'll probably be down. Mm -hmm. I agree. And the Jackson powers Johnson, as far as that goes, he is 22 on my big board. So um, yeah. Yeah. And as far as Brian Thomas jr. Like we said, you know, People love him. He's 18th on the consensus big board right now. I mean, that's just wild. Um, and you see his teammate Malik Neighbors is obviously up there at the number five spot. So I don't, I don't get it, dude. I just <clears> – <throat> to me, you could swap Brian Thomas Jr. and Troy Franklin, and that would make way more sense, swap their positions on that draft. and I could see that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, as far as the 33rd team, they've got him 21st. So yeah. he is up there, bro. The grade they've got on him is a 67. And obviously on the grading scale, 67 is a strong starter. So, Jacob, look, I know you got a, a good looking beard and all, but um, I'm telling you, man, we are in the yeah. minority, you and I, man. They hear my accent and they know, of course, he's going to screw it up, but yeah, they expect <laughs> you to get it right, Jacob. So, um, all right. So, just a couple, like I said, just a couple things we're trying to kind of bring into focus and go, okay, what is going on around the news? What's getting shook up? In the draft, okay, with the mock drafts, how are they starting to lay, get kind of the lay of the land? That mock draft we did last night, this is what it looked like. Uh, we got Jackson Powers Johnson in the 25 spot from Oregon at center. We took Ennis Straw Jr., Tim's guy, at number 41. <laughs> you got a defensive lineman, Chris Jenkins, at 58. I love that pick. Christian Mahogany, uh, guard at the 88 spot. Kalen Bullock, safety out of USC in the 91st spot. Audric Estime at 126, halfback out of Notre Dame. Uh, Javen Foster, again, we keep taking Javen Foster. That's the name that keeps popping up, guys. And I'm telling you, every year when we do this, there's usually two or three names that you go, man, every time we do a mock, they just seem to kind of make sense. Yep. They're falling in the draft. Missouri. So, Missouri's got, got strong with the draft choices this year. I like it. I, we went back-to-back linebackers there. At 202, we went Jalen Ford from Texas. At 219, we went Trayvon Wallace from Kentucky. And then we went safety, Oladapo at 245. And then, of course, Jacob's got Dallas Gant there. Yes. Dude, I, like, I like that draft, too. That's a I do, draft. man. I do, yeah. Again, I you know, Goody's going to make a couple picks where we go, what in the world? What What is he doing here? And, and they'll probably pan out. For the most part, the drafts we've done, I, I, it's rare I come away and go, man, I really don't like that draft. It just seems like the way the draft falls – and maybe it's because Goody has got 11 picks, five in the top 100, right? Uh, yeah, Chris, don't do this to me, please. Sir. We're at the 44-minute mark. We are not doing a mock draft tonight. I'm going to say it one more time. We are not doing a mock draft tonight. He went. I paused for dramatic effect. <laughs> so, you sure so, about uh, that? We were going to look around at a couple more mocks, too. I think we probably got time. Um let me uh, let me go to the consensus or the mock draft database. This is a really cool feature they got. I'm going to widen this out for just a second. 
Um, so if you go to mocks, right, and in 2024 mocks, it'll show you the most recent mocks. It just so happens that the most recent one is for Packers Wire, all right? So let's hit on this mock real quick, and this is what their staff put together. Um, they had uh, – I won't read them all off, but I'll just kind of give a couple nuggets here. Three quarterbacks, one, two, and three were three quarterbacks. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, all right? Um, then it looks like you got, you know, Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze. So three receivers went in the next four picks. Joe Alt flies off the board. You got Dallas Turner at edge. Um, you're kind of seeing, all right, there's a tackle taken there. Shanu, you got Brock Bowers. No, I forgot about Brock Bowers. That's another one coming off the board. will help the Packers a lot. Um, and uh, Jared Verse, J.J. McCarthy, another quarterback taken there in the 11th spot. Uh, you're seeing tackles, tackles, right, flying off the board. There's Quinion Mitchell. So <laughs> they took Cooper DeGene. Um, if Cooper DeGene's sitting there at the 25 spot, let's go around the horn with that real quick. How do you guys feel about Cooper DeGene in the 25 spot? Because on my board, I've got him at 33. Um, scored out great in 2022. He was the 11th best cornerback in all of college football. Last year, dropped to like 151, so he had kind of a down year. Um, that kind of fits that mode of the Jaden Reed approach, right? I think he's got a pro day coming up, too, if I remember correctly, guys. Um, I could be wrong. No, you're right. I, uh, I believe it's Tuesday or so. Let's see. Yeah, April 8th. Oh, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. All right. So hopefully we'll get some answers on Cooper DeGene tomorrow. That'd be cool. Here's a guy. <clears throat> so how do, you, how do you all feel about Cooper DeGene getting mocked here at 25? Uh, um, go ahead, Jacob. I I would be okay with it. I went up and down on DeGene. Um, I, I think I'd be okay with it. I like his versatility. Um, I think that he could help us a lot in the return game if need be. I think we could actually plug him in at corner it, and I think that he'd be a great safety, um, especially with what we need him to do or what we need out of that safety position. I think that it, I'd be okay with it. I, I honestly, I would rather him not be there than be there, if I had to be yeah. honest. Um, but if he is there, I like, like for instance, I would be, if we have the option to go over Koupa Dejean and Kool-Aid McKinstry, I think I'd still go Kool-Aid, if I'm being okay. honest. But gotcha. I don't know. I can see I can see both picks. Um, if I go to Kool Aid McKinstry on my board, I've got him in the twenty spot, so he is um, significantly higher. He's thirteen spots higher than uh, than Cooper DeGene. So yeah, um, yeah, it would be a nice decision to have to make. It sure would, Prince. You're right, DeGene over over McKinstry. Coach Lynn says love at secondary versatility would allow McKinney to move around. So. Uh, yeah. You guys got anything to add on that and the fact that Cooper Jean taking it 25 there? I wouldn't be upset. Um, there's corners I like better. Um, Rake Straw mm-hmm. being one of them. Um, <laughs> looking at my notes. Rake Straw. Um, Nate Wiggins from Clemson is another one. Um, you know, He's Kamari so Lassiter. He's so Kamari small. Lassiter. Um, I was gonna I was gonna Marion Arnold from Bama. I mean yeah. Like we it. talked about Quinion Mitchell, another guy, you know, may or may not be on the board there, but mm-hmm. uh, there, there's also a lot of corners that I like less than DeGene as well. Um, and then, you know, Jacob's point about possible utilization in the safety role, um, you know, in a pinch also makes him kind of intriguing um, at 25. So, yeah, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset at all if we took Cooper DeGene. Yeah. As far as Rake Straw, Rake Straw is sitting in the 34 spot. So he's right behind Cooper DeGene. Yeah. One thing we got to take into consideration, I'm pretty sure Rake Straw um, did not score above a seven. I think it was fairly low as far as his RAS. So Goody's never taken a first round pick with an, you know, an 8.3 more, yeah. or less than an 8.3, I believe is what it is. And so, I know what you're saying, Jacob, too, as far as size. You know, we got to consider size, especially in this. Uh, this Halfley defense too, you know, mm-hmm. we want guys to play big and fast and, and strong. So, um, you know, you can't have too many, too many small corners. I'll Chad's, Chad's calling out Tim. He goes, is Tim ever going to let us know? If you're like, <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, just, tune in, tune in to tomorrow. I'll be sure to confirm that for you. Replace Tim's name with Clayton and put Newbin instead of Rake. Right? <laughs> so, uh, Coach Lynn says, I would want to see Dejean in the slot. Um, or, or post safety. safety or box, yeah, that's the that's the interesting thing for sure. Uh, see, Jake Shavink says Dejean would be such a good uh, nickel player, and you know, 
the only thing that makes me hesitant on that front, I agree. I think he would be a better nickel than Keyshawn Nixon, but it kind of feels like Halfley likes Keyshawn Nixon as a slot. At least that's what was being said that when he came in and watched the tape of the current players, like that's my I want that guy to be my nickel, is what it sounded like. Now, oh, wait, so why does he like him? I'm still trying to wrap my head around that because too, we've talked about how the second that Goody makes a signing at a position, he usually drafts to replace that position. So I could see him being like, all right, we're going to give Nixon Great a point. good bag right here. Keep him on for at least a good solid year or two. Maybe it's more highlighted. This money is for the kickoff stuff, which I've actually heard some weird mixed stuff on the kickoff stuff. But anyways, what if he's more focused on that and he's looking like, okay, we already paid Nixon. Now we need his replacement right away. That's kind of what I want to do. I don't see Nixon as our freaking nickel corner. I just don't. Yeah. We haven't and, seen him in, this, in, in Halfley system yet though, either. That's you know, a good point. Maybe, um, maybe this is what it takes and he's utilized in, in different ways or, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate, you know? Right. If you get the message out there too, think about this. It's lying season, right? If you want the to fall in your lap, you say Keyshawn Nixon's our slot guy, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> Great point. Somebody go, oh, they're not going to take him. They just play, pay Keyshawn Nixon $6 million. And yep. all of a sudden, bang, like Chris Hansen on the Catch a Predator. The door opens. He says, have a seat. <laughs> have a seat, sir. Let you have a seat. Yeah, let's go here. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, anything else you guys want to hear? Let me scroll down here. I, I did want to touch on this. Players not included in the first round. Jackson Powers Johnson, right? Oh. Um, Michael Penix Jr., quarterback out of Washington, and Bo Nix, quarterback out of Oregon. So it looks like there were four quarterbacks taken. If I remember correctly, yeah, definitely four quarterbacks taken. So that's good news. That's better than three, right? But you'd like to see Bo Nix or Michael Penix Jr. kind of climb up. What I would like to see is Kansas City or San Francisco maybe trade out of that 31 or 32 to allow a team to jump up and get that fifth-year option on a potential franchise quarterback if they think Bo Nix or Michael Penix Jr. is one of those guys. So, um, yeah. So there is the – First round mock from Packers Wire, and that was provided here on the mock draft database. That was done on April 5th, the most recent mock on their website. So kind of cool to see how other people are thinking when it comes to the draft here. So um, anything else you guys want to hit on, we could comb through the chat here a little bit too. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll start with this one. If you guys got anything, you just cut me off. Uh, do you, any Anything else you want to hit on, Jacob? Anything we missed, man? Uh, I'll think of it if I – What would you say? I said I'll think of it. I'll, I'll yell it out. But right now I'm, I'm just looking over the chat to see if we missed anything. Cool. Cody in the chat says, how many games this year will be determined by a score off of a new kick – off the new kickoff rules? I, I think there's going to be a few. Um, you know, based off of the, the numbers that, that they're sharing and how it increased the explosive plays, um, even if it's not a touchdown, just – I'm thinking of that new kickoff rule, and I'm thinking of a team, you know, being down by a couple points, and it's yeah. like, okay, if we kick it in the in the landing zone and they get a big return, well, they're gonna they're gonna get in field goal range quick. But also, if you kick it through the end zone, I think it puts it at the thirty, pretty decent field position, right? So it's like, damned if you do and damned if you don't. There, what do you think, Tim? Do you think, uh, you think how many games do you think will be determined? You don't have to get an exact number. Do you think it's going to be that big of a factor? I think a handful for sure. We'll, we'll see, especially like to your point, Clayton, like even let's say, even if they do start at the 30, uh, you get a couple quick hitters, get out of bounds. The way these kickers are, you know, booting the ball from 60 plus with regularity nowadays. I mean, you don't, you know, you don't have to get as close as you used to, to get into field goal range. So um, I can see points coming off of that for sure. Um, You know, and that's, that's Cody's question. He's not necessarily saying, uh, you know, a touchdown off the return or even a touchdown in general, but just these new uh, return rules, these new kickoff rules leading to quick scores, you know, short possessions, points on the board quickly. I could see it happening a handful of times. I, I can also see uh, that happening kind of maybe, um, you know, at least a quarter of the way into the season as guys kind of like get used to the new way things are happening. We might see more of that and uh, yeah. the way uh, coaches are adjusting their, their strategy and where they're putting some of these kickoffs situationally really what it does is it really, it, pu- it puts your special teams in a situation where they have to know situational football. You know, the, the day of the routine kickoff is over with. Um, so these are going to impact play for sure. I, I would agree with that. 
Yeah. Carly Ray in the chat says, but a slot corner has the same basic responsibilities regardless of the scheme, right? Ball tracking for one, and Nixon was faked out uh, way too often last season for my comfort level. I agree with the second part, but as far as the same responsibilities, Carly, um, it, it just depends on what the call is. You know, I, I'm not accusing you of this, but I know it's it's a common theme within just football fans in general. It's like they like to pretend like this scheme is way different than this scheme, right? And it really isn't. Like when you break it down to the nuts and bolts, it's too high or single high. Middle field open, middle field close. Are you bringing four, five, or six? Are you playing man coverage or zone? Every defense in the NFL have the same play calls in their playbook. It's just how often are they calling those specific plays, right? So um, I'm with you on the second part for sure. Um, I'm not sold on Nixon in the slot either, but I'm not going to sit here and – not that you are either, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know more than halfway, right? So um, as far as in his defense, though, are you going to fire that nickel more? And that's what Tim's referring to, right? Are you going yeah, to be more aggressive there, right? I so. think if he's saying he liked he liked Keyshawn in, in the slot, he had to have been looking at tape last year and just seeing – seeing how he's being utilized, you know what I mean? It had to be like, oh, man, give, give, let me take control of this, and I'll have 25 out there, you know, play, playing hot to his full potential in the slot, you know. So they're going to, you know, hey, we got a lot of reasons to to put him out there, you know, not just the uh, financial side of things. But um, I, I've always believed Keyshawn's more than just a special teamer type of guy. Um, I think it's finding – a more defined role for him. And if it's the slot, then we're going to see this year. It's either, you know, it's going to go one of two ways, right? We're going to see a lot of what we saw last year and kind of go, oh, okay, he's not a liability in the slot, but he's certainly not a pro bowler in the slot, right? Maybe right. this is the year he takes that leap. Maybe he puts up, uh, you know, a hell of a season. So we'll see. And to, to Jacob's point, I still agree with the sentiment of if that's the approach, doesn't mean we don't draft somebody. Right. doesn't mean we don't bring somebody in behind them, you know? Absolutely. Um, the other thing, too, like when you're talking about these different systems and everything, someone asked me the other day, what's the difference between a, a jack backer and a buck backer? And this is just a perfect example right here. And I read several articles on it and actually asked a couple of my coach buddies down here in Tennessee. There's like three different nicknames for those two positions other than jack and buck. So essentially, when you're talking about jack backer and buck backer, um, and the way it's explained to me, it's referring to a 34 defense, okay? Your jack backer is short for jack of all trades. He typically plays outside linebacker, a seven or a wide nine tech on the wide side of the field, Preston Smith. You know why they call him the jack of all trades or the jack backer? Because on the wide side of the field, you're going to run a lot of zone blitzes and you're going to drop him into coverage. Hmm. 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 Joe Barry was the only guy that did that, but that's that's what they refer to as Jack Backer. Buck Backer is essentially a Sam Backer in a 34 defense, good for setting the edge, that type of thing as far as uh, against outside zone run, that type of stuff. So on the tight end side is where your Buck Backer will be. Buck equals Sam. Jack equals Will. It's essentially what it comes down to. And coaches, just like my buddy was telling me when I talked to him on the phone last night, coaches like to throw their little lingo in there. And sure enough, in an article, I seen a jackbacker or this or this or this is the same thing. I'm going, God almighty, these people in their pissing contests. It just blows my mind. Do you think that goes to to your point, like you were just saying, Clayton, about how like, hey, it's all the, the these schemes are similar in a lot of ways. And a lot of these plays uh -huh. are the same. Do you think it's just to kind of add deception? That, hey, we call it this. You may have heard it this. You're not going to necessarily yeah. know, you know. That's a good point. That's a good point. Like, if they hear them in passing, right. hey, hey, you're playing Jack. Over here, you're Jack. You're Jack. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you're whatever. You're Camel. You're Camel. Okay, cool. You know, the, the offense may not pick up on it, but – you talk to players, they're not on the field trying to pick up signs most of the time. That's uh, that's happening on the sidelines with people filming right. the guys that are getting the signs and all that good True. stuff. So um, shout out to uh, Coach Harbaugh, who's now with the uh, L.A. Chargers. So uh, Coach Lynn in the chat said, would y'all be okay if the Packers traded back to 33 to control day two of the draft? 
Yeesh. Yeesh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. That would be a dream for me because there's like as long as they group. take a corner. <laughs> as long as they take Ray Straw <laughs> at 33. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. So like Bucky Brooks was saying the other day, this he said this is an extremely deep draft, but the depth ends after the third round is what he said. So he's saying, yes, it is deep, but once you get past the third, it really drops off. So as many picks as you can get in the first three rounds, I think the better off you're going to be. I really do. So I think that uh, Sam Beto here, I, I, as much as I keep going over and over and over our roster Great. as to what our needs are, I can't help but look at, like, all right, worst case scenario, it's week one. We've got Jair at one corner, maybe let's say Stokes on the other, and we got Nixon in the slot. Jair gets hurt. That right there is our season. We just had Stokes as our number one cornerback now, and we have Nixon sliding into cornerback two or maybe Valentine or Valentine. Like, we yeah. need two or three stabs at cornerback in this draft, I think, at least. And that's listen, why I struggle with the trading back. You know, it's it's that's it's that's what point. hangs me up on it. Like, if we trade back, we're we're basically saying, All right, we're gonna we're gonna try and grab some corners in the fifth and sixth and seventh round and I don't know how that's going to work out for us, you know. Or at a minimum, you're banking on one of those top guys to try right. to or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We don't like that. So, uh, no, it's a great point, man. And, and you know, back to the whole slot conversation, Jacob, when you said, um, you know, history has is basically tells us that when he pays for a position, he goes ahead and gets a replacement. I think it's – I think it could be a little bit of that, but I also think it's at that moment, if you're willing to pay someone there, there, it shows you how much value they're placing on it. Like, okay, this is really important to us right now, right? And, again, it, it, if the slot goes down, right, who's playing slot for us? We don't have anybody, right? So, so That may be why DeGene is so enticing if he's on the board, right? Because you know. you're going to cover corner and then you got you got a nickel back up here in a pinch. Yeah, definitely. All right, anything else, guys? Anything else? Let's go around the horn one last time. Jacob, you got anything, bro? No oh, man, I'm um I'm excited. We're doing a show tomorrow night, I assume. Yes, sir. We are. We'll uh we'll go ahead and get that set up. So we're planning on going live tomorrow night. We'll have we some can, other uh, we can touch on uh is it Cooper's draft day tomorrow? Yeah, or hopefully hopefully that stuff comes through in real time. I've had a hard time kind of finding it in real time. And sometimes the RAS site isn't updated very quickly, but like I think Amagaji should be in the system now, but Cooper DeGene's hopefully will get a good idea. And, and most of the time what people will do is take the unofficial times, throw them into the RA, RAS system um, just kind of on their own to give us an idea. But Cooper DeGene's going to be a big one, man. He is. Like, is he going to score? If he scores over nine, you're going to see his draft stock rise. And I think uh, that will kind of solidify, okay, if he's there at 25, there's a really, really good chance that Goody's going to take him. If he scores under an eight, you can pretty much roll out Goody taking him in the first round, right? It's going to be huge. Um, <laughs> and you got edge defender Jonah Ellis coming in on, on the same day at Utah. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. on the ninth will be something else we could talk about as well. So Prince in the chat says, Cooper will work out mid-eclipse so there won't be any film of it. Brilliant. Chess, <laughs> not checkers, boy. Chess, <laughs> not checkers. So, yeah, it's it supposed to be cloudy good. here, so we're going to miss the eclipse, I believe, but. That last one was cool. Did you guys ever experienced that? You remember the last one that came through? 2017. I, on, I did see yeah. it. Yeah. I was in Nashville on uh right outside of a, a bar. Oh, I won't say Oh, that. surely not. Yeah, I, don't know. I was working and I was with uh I just happened to be outside with a homeless gentleman and he was a cool, cool man. I used to go. He there. said, Hey, I got a magic trick for you. Watch this. No, <laughs> and I, I, I walked up there. I was, like, the I, was sun like, disappear. I was like, I was like, yo, I was like, you know, there's about to be an eclipse, right? He's like, yo, you bring me some glasses. I'm like, all right. And I went and grabbed some glasses. He's like, <laughs> that is he's awesome. like, I got some glasses. He's like, I might as well have a beer, right? While I watch the eclipse. And I went, you son of a duck. And I went in there and I grabbed a beer and we both sat and drank, drank a beer and watched the eclipse in the middle of the road. So you had a cold beer, a daddy soda. And enjoyed the eclipse with a homeless guy. Is that right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Bro, that is awesome. It was that, great. Seriously, I'm not I'm not BS and that is that is cool, dude. That it is good. Cool. That's well, awesome. Man. I was well, I remember uh, about it. it sounds silly, Tim, but like I remember being outside, we were doing a huge mulch job for a customer, and the shadow being cast across the leaves, every shadow from a leaf was the shape of the eclipse. That blew my mind. Wow. Like you could you could it looked like a little mini sun with the 
you know, with the the, yep. the God's thumbnail. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Moon look. I was like, I was tripping. I was tripping. It's like, what is this? So where we were you were at? In, uh, the woods in Hendersonville, North Carolina in the summer of 17. And I just remember when it happened, what you were saying visually, but the fact that all the wildlife, every bird, every insect, every noise just stopped. Everything just everything just got real quiet during that whole time. And then as as it passed and and we got sunlight again, you heard the activity just pick back up. It was kind of eerie and surreal. That was probably my biggest memory. Hey, um, nature, nature knows, dude. Yep. And if you're ever in the woods and there's not an eclipse happening, this is I grew up in the mountains. Like it was dirt bike squirrel hunting. That's where I spent my time in in you know Harlan County, Kentucky. If you're ever in the woods midday and things go quiet, look, take a peek around because there is a predator nearby. Let me tell you. Thank <laughs> you look over and off in the distance through the cattails and the and the 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 uh, the spruce thicket. You go, is that Bill Belichick? <laughs> in the world, so. Yo, Yo, hey, if you guys want to watch, if you guys are like me, I love horror movies, but they have to be somewhat good, somewhat entertaining. I love <laughs> uh, cheesy ones too, but like, anyways, I I can't remember. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. It's called Exists. If you like. Uh oh, that's Big cool. foot, Bigfoot movies that are like it's actually it's the best Bigfoot movie I've ever seen. It's shot kind of like in a situational, almost like a um the Blair Witch Project. Oh, it's, oh come it, on! It's, it's actually oh. by the same writers that did the movie. It's the best Bigfoot movie I've ever seen. It's not a hundred percent great, but it's really good. It's actually watchable. At the end of the movie, I was like, "Wow, that was pretty good. Like that was actually good." Exists. Mm. Check it out. Bill Belichick is the main character, yes. <laughs> True Bruce Steve says that predator's name, Clayton. Um, yeah, if I smell chicken wings up there in the woods, I become a predator. I promise you that. Yo, have you have y'all ever heard of Bobcat in the woods? Oh, bro. It's I think I told you ever seen it. one. Terrifying. Bro, I think I told the story on the pod. I'm gonna tell it again. We're only an hour and six minutes here, right? All right. Talking about Bobcats. We were deer scouting one day, me and my buddy Kyle. Kyle Moyers, one of the best men you ever meet. He had this old dog, Leo. Leo was an old hound. Leo was not scared of me. I I seen and heard stories of Leo chasing after bears. Like he wasn't scared of anything, right? We're walking down this logging road and we're coming in. It's kind of getting dusk. And Leo all of a sudden tucks his tail between his legs and gets about 10 yards in front of us. And I mean, he is terrified. I'm like, what has got Leo spooked like this? Like Leo's a badass. Like, what are we doing here? And all of a sudden, dude, we were kind of we were walking along this logging road. There's a huge cliff line where they had cut the logging road out of the side of the mountain. And all of a sudden, that that bobcat let out, bro. The rest of the way, Leo was in between us, <laughs> and I had I was I was in the back, walking backwards with my shotgun faced out. Kyle was in front of me, walking forward with his shotgun. We were waiting for that thing just to come off the cliff line. Terrifying. Sounds like a a woman or a baby scream. It's just like the worst thing ever, bro. We need to get that sound by. You it's did bad. this. Jake. You did this. This is your fault, Jake. I see <laughs> oh, you got a bunch of Mark. Go ahead, get after him there, Jake. Jake throwing shade over here, going, sure, time to talk about bobcats, but not to do a mock draft. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a uh, too old for the St. Emilio's got his race car bed ready just in time to hide from the eclipse. <laughs> we got and then uh, Carly Ray. <laughs> giving me shade saying it's the best i've ever seen it's pretty watchable <laughs> <laughs> it really is good i'm not i'm not in harry and the hendersons that's uh, it's, yeah, it's better than harry and the henderson says dead fish well all right let's get out of this show sucks <laughs> yeah, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us um we'll be back tomorrow for pta live someone asked chris uh ron sample dear <laughs> and bobcat walked up and looked at me and spit a mouse <laughs> he said yeah I don't need this anymore. Come on down here, old man. Get out of that tree stand. <laughs> um, someone, Chris Ann asked a question here. I wanted to hit real quick, man. Where's it at? I know it's up here. He said, good morning, Lambo. Question mark. We did get a couple other ones, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, tomorrow, I could possibly swing it. I don't know. What are you thinking, Tim? Uh, I don't know about tomorrow. 
Maybe try to shoot for Tuesday morning. Yeah. Yes. 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 All right. No good morning, Lambo. Lambo. Try to get at least a couple of them maybe lined up for this um, this upcoming week. I got some stuff starting up. uh, But uh, I think it would be nice. Me and Tim could definitely throw out at least a couple smaller ones maybe this week. Yeah. For sure. Whatever you guys want to do, man. Um, We survived the eclipse. We'll see you Tuesday morning. Yeah. That's a big (laughs) gift. Exactly. So we'll be back tomorrow night for PTA Live, um, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. We may have time for a mock drafting, but we got to make sure we get through all our Bobcat stories, first of all. And Jacob, having a cold beer with a homeless man watching an eclipse, that sounds like something out of a movie, man. I love it. So, that sounds yeah. like a movie right really there. Does. It <laughs> does. And then and the movie starts, and the homeless man go, takes you back through his life, right, and talking yep. about where they got to start and everything. <laughs> And Write this Jake, down, Jacob. Jake, what are we doing, man? Write Jake this down. Jacob comes and says, let me buy you a daddy soda. That's it. Exactly right. This is our He's Bill thinking about this guy at this spot one time in college. His name was Bill Belichick. What would you say, Jacob? <laughs> this is our Goodwill hunting moment. We just got to write this it down. Is, yeah. 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 Just write it down, man. Just write it down. All right. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> That's exactly right. For those of you listening on the pod, thank you for making us a part of your day. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world. And go back up. The power sweep. Actually, it's the it's the lead play in our in our offense. We ask our Y end or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet to get an isolation with the with the linebacker. He's going to tackle, to take the defensive end if he's over him. If he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. If the Y end has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the Y end has the linebacker in, he comes all the way around. Look at this play where we're trying to get it. A seal here and a seal here. And try to run this play in the alley.